Members, the question is the motion be agreed, and we'll Peter Foster. Thank you, Deputy President. I also would like to thank the Honourable Sophia Mamond for moving this very interesting uh, motion today. It's been great to listen to all the contributions so far of the speakers. My gosh, we are getting quite an education today, so thank you very much for all the speakers who have spoken thus far. I would like to speak to two parts of the motion, that being in innovation and in STEM. And I'd also like to expand that to astrotourism, which I think a few members have already touched on today. The honourable, honourable member is correct. New and emerging technologies and industries present us with fantastic opportunities, and we mustn't be afraid to grasp those opportunities. And in regional WA, we can make the most of those opportunities that are presented to us. In September this year, I travelled to Mount Magnet with my family and also the Honourable Minister for Regional Development to attend the Mount Magnet Astro Rocks Festival. This is an annual event which is hosted and co-funded by the Shire of Mount Magnet. The Shire is building tourism in this area by capitalising on its unique geology. Yes, getting to that, Honourable Member. Um, by capitalising on the unique geology and the fact that they are perfectly placed to see the stars. The McGowan government supports this festival through the regional events scheme and a Lottery West grant, which I had the pleasure of presenting uh, to the council earlier this year. It goes to show that what can be done with some ingenuity and a willingness to invest. After its beginning in 2012, the Astro Rocks Festival has become a roaring success. By 2019, it was attracting more than 1,000 visitors to a, to a town that only has a population of 500. It was exciting to see the event back on the calendar this year. As we all know, unfortunately, a lot of events were cancelled uh, last year due to the pandemic. Festival attendees got to discover and experience the area's natural features through two very different complementary lenses. A program of activities by leading scientific thinkers in the fields of astronomy and geology, as well as enjoying stories of the traditional custodians of the land, the Batamaya people. Visitors were welcomed to country by the elders of the Batamaya people and by the Shire President Jorgen, sorry, Jensen Jorgen. On the Friday night, we were treated to an evening of astro fun on the town oval. There was night sky telescope viewing, there was displays on the Murchison Wadefield array, and there was a 2021 Astrofest astrophotography exhibition. From the oval, we were able to look through the telescopes to see the moon, the Saturn, <coughs> and also Jupiter, which uh, the Honourable Dr. Brian Walker might be interested in. Um, it was great seeing uh, the rings of Saturn on that evening, and a few of us tried to get photos on our phones to capture those images. Uh, the lineup on the evening included the International Centre for Radio Astronomy, CSIRO, the Space Science and Technology Centre, SciTech, and the Gravity Discovery Centre. What a lineup! It was great seeing so many tourists gazing at the stars on the main oval. Uh, this year's festival also features a series of workshops and outdoor field visits. And if anyone's interested, I did bring the program with me today. Um, there is a great opportunity for the community members to come together and learn and gain practical astronomy and photography experience. On the Saturday, we were treated to lectures including Guardians of the Dark, the creation of the Jin Jin Dark Sky Reserve, Our Amazing Cosmos, and also the Murchison Geo Region and their aspirations to create a global geopark by Professor Ross Dowling and Mrs Wendy Dowling, which I believe some of the members here know. The Murchison Geo Region is Australia's first major geo sorry, geotourism development. It highlights the abiotic, biotic and cultural features of significant sites to encourage a deeper understanding of and connection with the land and the sky. Mount Magnet has literally become a magnet, a tourist magnet, especially for astrotourism. And for that reason, Mount Magnet is able to make itself an attractive destination for astronomers with its unique dark sky. I would encourage members of this council to consider travelling to next year's Mount Magnet Astro Rocks Festival. My family had a fantastic time. There was actually a lot of other events on that weekend, including the outdoor cinema, which we got to enjoy a movie, and the Mount Magnet races as well, which we had a flutter on. That was quite a lot of fun. 
Uh, light pollution has become increasingly a problem for studying the stars from the Earth. We, end up, we light up advertising signs, street lights, our businesses and our homes, and it ends up lighting a lot more than that. That's why it's so um, important to have that very dark sky to be able to do the astronomy. This is why the WA Planning Commission has been putting together a position paper on the provision and designation of dark sky locations, ensuring that we can all preserve our ability to look beyond our own world. After all, wherever you're travelling, it's best to make sure you can see where you are going. WA's celestial landscape is an extraordinary natural asset. Our night skies offer exceptional viewing opportunities for scientific and recreational stargazers that could unlock new tourism opportunities around the state. There is a draft dark sky and astrotourism position statement that's been released by the WA Planning Commission, which sets out a list of principles and flexible cost-neutral land-using planning. Um, shame the Honourable Neil Thompson is out of the office on parliament, urgent parliamentary business. He would have been interested in that. Uh, the policy will enable planning decision makers to consider pollution sources and the impact of that amount, direction, time and type of artificial lighting in an area or proposed development which would affect that dark sky. Uh, as the longest surviving gold mining settlement in Australia, Mount Magnet has already got a place in our history, but by its renewal and reinvention comes through smart government investment and smart local thinking. Mount Magnet is changing. And the council there are looking at ways to diversify to be sustainable. As I mentioned, the town only has 500 people, so they're looking at ways for new jobs, new opportunities. But also they're looking to ways to engage the Batamaya people in that journey as well. It is no small feat to find ways of thriving in that unique uh, dry landscape there at Mad Magnet, but as the future approaches and the challenges become clearer, it's a skill we all need to learn. Both the Batamaya people and Mount Magnet are way ahead of the curve in that respect. Um, noting the time, I will hurry up. Um, I wanted to touch on uh, STEM. Um, as everyone knows, the budget came out earlier this year and there was a commitment of $449 million into building and upgrading schools. And this is a significant, sorry, a significant proportion of that is for STEM resources and STEM facilities. Uh, my local primary school, Tom Price Tom Primary School, has a new science lab which um, is already in place. Um, as part of the, the budget, this year's budget, there was $1 million committed to the Carnarvon Community College for STEM, uh, $600,000 committed to Tom Price Senior High School for STEM, uh, $1 million committed to Calbarry District High School for STEM, and $800,000 committed to Exmouth District High School for STEM. Um, our government is investing in opportunities um, that we have, like the Astrolux Festival and like STEM, and we are making sure we don't lose those opportunities, such as ensuring we retain more dark sky through the WA Planning Commission and um, making sure that we put our kids first in the best possible position to take advantage of opportunities by giving them the best education that we have. And that, Deputy President, is thinking big. Thank you.